What a beautiful morning and even better that now you have joined us. Such a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you so much for tuning in to our family here at Word and Worship Center. And you know, just for this year, our theme is rooting, grounding and making disciples. So it's so beautiful to have you here to join us on that journey. And with that being said, I hope you are blessed and enriched and you can't be stingy. So make sure to share this link to your mommy, your auntie, your papa and your friend. I hope you have a pen and a paper for everything that God has to say to you today. We do hope that you are blessed. Here's our word. It's a wonderful day today. And uh, thank you once again for being a part of this and joining in and tuning in. We trust that uh, all is well with you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, surely goodness and loving kindness follow us all the days of our lives. That's, That's a scripture that we need to claim and make ours. That surely goodness and loving kindness, the the, 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 the mercy of God follows us all the days of our lives. Amen. This morning I want to share on a subject I've called Launch Out Into the Deep. I believe just as I was praying last night, it's, it's a stirring that uh, the Holy Spirit just put in my heart. Uh, I just want to stir us and exhort us even this morning. We are going to read uh, first of all in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. This is how it reads. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here. That's the New King James. But the King James Version says, come up hither. I I, I like that one. I, I almost took that as the title of the message, come up hither. And I will show you things which must take place after this. And then the writer who is John the Beloved says, immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and then he begins to describe the one who sat on the throne and the throne itself. But I want to zero in on the phrase, come up hither, come up hither. That's the, that's the exhortation this morning. That's the staring, that's the uh, word from the Spirit, come up hither. Rise up to a higher level, rise up to another level in your walk with God. Don't remain stagnant. Don't remain in the same place. Don't keep going around in settles. Come up hither. Rise up to a, a, another level in, in your walk with God. They are greater levels. And here the writer John says, when he came up, immediately was in the spirit and, and, uh, and he saw the throne of God. When we come up to the higher levels that the Holy Spirit is calling us, We begin to experience greater things. We begin to experience a greater presence of the Lord, a greater peace, a greater joy, greater breakthroughs in our work with God, greater manifestations of the Spirit. Uh, The Spirit said, come up and I will show you things. There begins to be revelation knowledge. Uh, When we come up, and we rise up to another level. Revelation knowledge comes into our hearts and our spirits, and it gives us insights into the things that we need to hear and the things that are around us and the things that he wants to to see take place because he says here, "And, and I will show you things which must take place after this. God is able to show us things that are about to come. Uh, Remember the Holy Spirit, he says when he was shared, when he came, he will tell you of things to come the paracletos. And so that's why he is here. And so the call this morning to each one of us, including myself, is come up hither. Rise up to another level. Don't remain on the same plane. Don't keep going around in settles. Uh, there is a greater work in, uh, that is there before you. And when you come up to that higher level, you begin to ex- uh, have greater experiences of the presence of God, greater manifestations and greater impact in and through your life begins to happen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, even if I was to end the message right now, that's the thrust of what I'm feeling even this morning. Come up hither. Rise up. Uh, uh, That requires effort. That requires action. We, We cannot sit back. It requires us to do something. Hallelujah. Come up hither. Hallelujah. That's the cry of the Holy Spirit. Um, We will read as well in uh, the Gospels where we get the title of the message. Luke chapter 5. We'll read verses 1 to 10. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood. This is the Lord Jesus that is being talked about here. That he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. 
Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Uh, so he taught, he taught the multitudes from the boat. Uh, and uh, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Hallelujah. That's the sentence that uh, captures my attention. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Hallelujah. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Powerful uh, passage of scripture. But uh, after Jesus had used Simon Peter's boat, he says, launch out into the deep uh, and let down your nets for a catch. Uh, Jesus had not asked them what had happened during the night, but it was obvious they had caught nothing. And Peter answered, Simon answered, he says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So Simon says, we have worked all night. These are professional fishermen, expert fishermen. They had worked all night because uh, at night that's when they would, could uh, get, catch more fish. But this time around they caught nothing. All their efforts amounted to nothing. Uh, and Jesus says, launch out into the deep despite their experiences. So launch out into the deep. I'm linking this with the verse where I read earlier on in the book of Revelation where he says, come up hither. Come up hither. The, the spirit of those two phrases are the same, even though they refer to two different things. Launch out into the deep. It speaks of an effort of uh, 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 reaching out for more. Launch out into the deep. That's, again, the, the cry of the Holy Spirit to you and me today. That uh, let's not play on the shallow waters. There ain't no fish there. They, we can't have a catch there. Uh, we can't have life-changing experience. In the, in the shallow end of the pool. Uh, uh, he, he launch out into the deep, he says. That's where you will get a, a, a catch. In, in other words, the challenge for us this morning that I feel the Spirit of the Lord is saying is, uh, where you've been, it's okay, but launch out into the deep. Move to other territory. Move to other realms that you haven't been into. Launch out into the deep. Make an effort. Uh, if it's prayer that you need to increase, do so. If it's time of study of the word that you need to do so. If it's prayer and fasting, do so. Whatever it is, if it's reaching out to others and sharing the gospel even more, that's it. Launch out into the deep. Don't remain where you are. Don't remain where you are. Uh, launch out into the deep. He says when you do that, when you let down your nets there, that you'll, that's when you'll get a catch. That's where you will have life-changing experiences. And uh, I like the response of Peter. Of Simon Peter. He says, nevertheless at your word, even though he had had negative experiences prior to that, he says, nevertheless at your word. In other words, there could be situations that have been in the past barren and, and uh, hard for us and where we saw, saw no breakthrough, where we saw no headway, nothing happening. Uh, and the Holy Spirit uh, says, go back into the launch out into the deep and do even more. Uh, and, and, and you need to respond like Peter to say, nevertheless at your word, even though in the past there hasn't been any results, even though in the past it looked like I was hitting against a rock, I'm going to launch out and I'm going to believe God for a catch. And God is going to come through for you. It says when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to break. Hallelujah. Uh, as a result of the obedience to what the Holy Spirit had said to them. And it, it's so when we begin to obey and to launch out into the deep, to, to, to go higher in God, to, to, to extend the, uh, uh, our territory, to, 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 to go beyond where we are, 
God begins to move and he answers and he comes to our uh, rescue. He comes and he intervenes in our situations. So great was the catch that they had to uh, call others. They signaled to their partners to say, come and help us. So when God then, when we move out into the higher realms, into the deeper realms that God wants of us, we are able to not only be impacted ourselves, but we are able to impact others that are around us. And they will, that the, the impact of the Spirit will spread to other people. So the partners came. And they came and they filled both boats. Can you imagine? On, initially, on their own efforts, they caught nothing. But this time, their boat was filled. Their partner's boat was filled. Their nets began to break. Uh, and so Peter realized that Jesus indeed had, uh, uh, had come through for them. And, uh, he, 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 and he was glad that he obeyed what uh, uh, Jesus had said to him. So the, 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 the spirit of what I feel this morning is God is, is, is saying, is steering us to move out from the comfort zone, to, to, to move out to further territory, to other territory that we haven't been before. Uh, that steering, whatever steering it is, if it's waking up in the night hours and praying, the spirit is steering us. If it's going out and, and uh, praying for people, laying hands on the sick, and believe in God for recovery. He is saying that to you today. Hallelujah. Launch out into the deep. Come up higher. When you come up higher, you'll begin to see things that uh, he wants to, to, to see to come to pass. Hallelujah. As I speak of uh, in that manner, one of the areas uh, really that uh, I, I believe in terms of launching out into the deep, that is very key. I mentioned prayer. But I, I feel one of them is worship. Uh, so worship is, is, is one particular place where we need to go deeper, where we need to spend time in his presence, where we need to soak in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Last night I, was, I, 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 I spent quite some time in worship and I, I, I enjoyed the, 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 the soaking in the presence of God. And I, I, I felt that God was saying that's an area where we've got to go deeper. Worship. Go deeper. Hallelujah. I, I don't know for me, the song, this particular hymn keeps coming now and again. Uh, uh, it, it goes like this. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He's calling us. He walks with me and he talks with me. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I was reminded of one of the ingredients of incense. Incense is a picture of it and it's a typology of worship. And one of the ingredients that is mentioned in Exodus chapter uh, 35 is onaika. It says, uh, uh, when I looked into this, it, it's a fluid that was emitted uh, from a deep sea shellfish. Again, notice, uh, deep sea shellfish. Again, that speaks of depth. Uh, it opened and emitted this fluid that became a protection around it. That's what the presence of God does for us. When we go deeper into it, it insulates us. Not that we become uh, disconnected from the world around us, but it's such that the cares and the worries and the concerns of this world don't hang on us and weigh us down. It, uh, his presence becomes a protection around us. So uh, it, it was a deep sea shellfish. Uh, that's where this particular fluid came from. And so 
Worship, therefore, also speaks of depth. It's intimacy. Uh, and uh, I, I always use this particular example to say, when we talk about people swimming, uh, before they learn to swim, they must learn to float. Uh, and if you must float, you must learn to relax on the water. If you struggle, you go under. If you start kicking and, and, and doing all sorts, you go under. You have to, and you st if you start clenching your teeth and becoming uptight, you sink. But if you relax, because the body has got air pockets, uh, that uh, the water will then lift you up. It's called buoyancy. It, it, it lifts you up and you are able to float because of the air pockets that are within the physical body. So in worship, when we go into deeper, uh, we, we, the, the, we are sustained by the presence of God. There is no kicking and shoving and gritting our teeth and, 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 and fighting on our own. But we are sustained by his presence. He lifts us up. It's not our own effort. The scripture says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So that's what we need. Where It's not, not our efforts, but the, 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 the work of the Holy Spirit. And so, depth, worship, worship. There is a cry uh, from, from the Holy Spirit. Come up higher. Come up hither. In worship, go deeper. Spend time in, in worship. Spend time and minister to him. When you do that and you come out of his presence, your face and your situations will be changed and he will minister to you and you will come out strengthened and emboldened to face your situations. Hallelujah. So powerful is the aspect of worship that when we look at the nation of Israel, after Solomon had... Uh, after, after Solomon's reign, uh, what happened is that when Solomon's uh, reign came to an end, his kingdom was divided into two, the, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And uh, this northern kingdom of Israel had 19 kings. I've been going through 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. It's been an amazing uh, revelation once again as I do it each year. But uh, all the 19 kings in Israel were, were evil and they allowed idolatry to abound. There's a phrase that keeps coming up. I'm yet to go deeper into it. Uh, it's the phrase that they went back to the sins of Jeroboam. Looks like Jeroboam was pivotal in all the, 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 the sins that happened. The southern kingdom of Judah he also had some ungodly kings that also... Um, uh, did evil things and allowed high places and altars to okay. But they had four good kings. And uh, one thing to note is that these four good kings uh, allowed revival to, to be in the land. And one of the key things that I see is, is that uh, in allowing the, the revival and the, the, the restoration of, of, of righteousness to okay, they pushed on worship that which David, the psalmist, had introduced. Um, and they, 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 as a result, you'll find that there was a great reformation that occurred in their time. For instance, let's pick out a few ones. In the days of King Jehoshaphat, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 19 to 21, it was when Jehoshaphat was surrounded by three enemy kings. And uh, they had run out of ideas of what to do. And then a word of, 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 of the Lord came from one of the Levites and told them to go up against these people. And then in verse 19, it says, Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites, of the children of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord of God of Israel with voices loud and high. Notice this. They stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So th th that's became that became key in, even in the reign of Jehoshaphat worshiping God praising God uh, they stood up to praise God uh, verse 21 when he had consulted with the people he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever we know the whole story when they did that the Lord began to set ambushments against the enemy verse 22 and they began to kill one another. 
And when they came onto the battlefield, they found dead bodies. People had the, 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 the three enemy uh, armies had turned on each other and killed one another. And they, what they did, they came in and began to take the spoils. Funny enough, these, kept, these chaps had carried, carried jewelry into, into war, precious things. And so they took that and it took them three days to, to, to take that. But the, the key thing that I see is that praising and worshiping God was key in, in, in reviving Judah at this particular point in time. Hallelujah. And uh, one of the other um, key uh, guys that really brought revival in the nation of Israel was uh, not Israel, Judah. Uh, in the nation of Judah was um, Josiah. Second Chronicles chapter chapter uh, thirty four. Let me just quickly turn to Second Chronicles chapter thirty four, and we read some of the. Uh, we'll read uh, some verses in 30, chapter thirty four, and then in chapter thirty five, Josiah. Josiah began to rule when he was only uh, eight years old, and it says in um, Second Kings, Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned thirty reigned one years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. Seeking the God of his father David. Worship. That's what it is. He, he began to seek the God of his father. In the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem. Repentance. And he began to destroy these things, the wooden images, the carved images, the molded images. They broke down the altars of Baals in his presence and the incense altars which were above them. He cut down and the wooden images, the carved images, the molded images, he broke down in pieces and made dust of them. And scattered in all the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. This had actually been prophesied prior to this. And this was a fulfillment of prophecy. He also bent the bones of the priests on, the, on their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So he did in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali, all around with axes. And when he had broken down the altars and the wooden images, he had beaten the carved images into powder and cut down all the incense altars throughout the, all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. And then in, in the verses that follow, we read that they found the book of the law and they began to read the book of the law and they committed themselves to following what was written in the book of the law. In uh, chapter 35, chapter 35, it says uh, uh, the, he kept the Passover uh, and then they slaughtered uh, a lot of uh, 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 oxen and, and goats as, as offering. Um, then in verse, uh, the verse that I need, is verse uh, 14. Then afterward, he prepared portions for, 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 for they, the, this is the, these are the priests. They prepared themselves, they prepared portions for themselves and for the priests because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busy in offering, bent offerings and fed until night. Therefore, the Levites prepared portions for themselves and for the priests and for the sons of Aaron. Th then verse 15, uh, chapter 35. This is the verse that I want to again. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their places according to the command of David. Asaph, Haman, and Judah, and the king's seer. Also the gatekeepers were at each gate. They did, not have, they did not leave their position because their brethren, the Levites, prepared portions for them. But notice, it says the Levites were in their place. The singers, and the, the, singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their places according to the command of David. If you read and go back to the situations where David uh, gave the command, the command was that David had put people, singers, to, 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 to sing around the tabernacle that he had set up in Jerusalem, the tent that he had set up. And there were uh, groups of, of, of people that uh, were there worship, praising and worshiping 24-7. Every hour, there were 24 groups. Can you imagine? And so here they were, they were singing. And so the point I am pushing here is that Josiah pushed that. There was praise and there, were, there was worship. They were singing. And worship therefore becomes key to launch us into the deep where we are in communion with God, where we are in fellowship with him. The fellowship with the Father is key. The fellowship with, with God is key. 
the, the, the communion is key. That's where our lives are transformed. That's where indeed words are deposited in us and we are able to pick up a word that can change our situation. Words that can speak into situations that have looked barren and looked like they were not going to, to, to change at all. It's the key. Worship. And so this morning, the call, the cry is launch out into the deep. Come up higher. Don't remain where you have been. Do something. Make an effort to, to, to break the routine. Make an effort to, 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 to grow in, in, in those areas. Make an effort and, and begin to see the change that God will begin to, to bring. So it's not only in, in, uh, just these two that I've mentioned in the nation of Israel. It was also there in the times of Zerubbabel, in the times of Nehemiah. It was, worship was key. In the times of, of um, Hezekiah, uh, Hezekiah, 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 25. It says, And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with stringed instruments, with harps, according to the command of David, of God the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet. For thus was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. So, the, the worshippers, if you remember well and, and you contrast and compare, the tabernacle of Moses did not have worshipping. Uh, it was sacrifices mostly. And so when David uh, brought, uh, uh, came into power, he set up his tabernacle that had worship and that had praise. And so that became key in bringing about revival in the nation of Judah. Remember we said Judah, not Israel, it was all 19 evil kings. And so what I'm simply saying is in every move of God, in every revival, worship is key. In every awakening, Worship is key. The intimacy with the Father is key. And so even right now, there is that call. Come up higher. Launch out into the, into the deep. That's where we'll see our nets begin to break. That's where we'll make a catch. That's where we will hear from God. Launch out into the deep. Come up higher. I like where we began in Revelation. He says, come up higher and I will show you things that must take place. He will begin to show us the future. He will begin to reveal things to us. And uh, he says, when, when he came up higher, he says, I was immediately, I was in the spirit. Hallelujah. That's the realm where we need to function from. The realm of the spirit. Uh, we are supernatural beings. That's who we are. We serve a supernatural God. That's where we need to function from. So let's not act like natural beings only. Only. We are supernatural. Let's connect to that higher realm. Let's connect to connect to that higher level. That's where we belong. We, we, we need to be moving in power. We need to be demonstrating the power of the Holy Ghost. That's where we belong. That's where we need to, to move in that power. So my brothers and sisters, launch out into the deep. Come up higher. The Spirit call is calling out today. Move into, uh, move out from the comfort zone and begin to experience greater depths of God, greater heights of God. There is more than what we have experienced up to now. Hallelujah. God is calling us to that. Launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. I trust that uh, this short message has just stirred you and just set you on fire to, to seek his face, to launch out into the deep, to come up higher. To break out from the comfort zone and the status quo and begin to, to experience more of God. There is more than what we, want, what we have just experienced. Hallelujah. So the, that's the, the feeling I have. That's the feeling I had even as I was praying last night. That the Holy Spirit is calling us to that. He is stirring us to that. Let's take action. Let's not sit back. Let's launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to end by making a call to those that do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you are not born again, there is no way you can launch out into the deep in any way. It has to begin with a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe in your heart, acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It says when you do that, you will be saved. You become born again. You become a child of God. That becomes the first step in your walk with God. And then you are able to grow in your walk with God and get to know him more and more. I encourage you to accept him as Lord and Savior and believe in your heart. Pray out that prayer and make him Lord of your life. For those of us, brothers and sisters, I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you. Launch out into the deep. Come up higher. Go into those deeper realms of God. Uh, experience more of God. 
and, and, and take action. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. This coming week, may it be a week where you seek his face. May it be a week when, where you grow in intimacy and in worship and, in, and in, 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 in your knowledge of him as you pursue him. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful week as you launch out into the deep. God richly bless you this week. Amen.